If you told me three years ago that now I go to events alone, I start conversations with people I don't know, and I'm okay with having small talk with strangers, I would not believe you. I've always been known as somebody who's more quiet, more reserved, more shy, more introverted, but just because you've always been a certain way does not mean that you need to continue being that way. We have the choice to change or improve certain aspects of ourselves if it's no longer serving us. And in today's video, I wanna share with you how you can overcome social anxiety and be more confident in social situations so that you can build meaningful connections with people and just show up more confidently to social situations. So let's get into today's video. So before overcoming social anxiety, you first need to figure out where it's coming from. So for me, my social anxiety stemmed from my fear of being perceived and judged by other people. And the way that it would show up for me is that I felt like I had like a supervisor in my mind, that's what I would call it, where every single time that I would be in a social situation, that night when I got home, my mind would just repeat all of the things that I said or did and almost like grade me on my performance. And if I like messed up or if I stuttered or if I made some type of mistake, I didn't get the reaction that I was hoping for in that moment, then my mind would replay that over and over again and I would have like negative thoughts about myself as a result. And what this did is it just kind of made me be a lot more quiet because if I was more quiet, then there was less chance of me messing up and making mistakes and being judged or perceived. And if you can relate to this, then you know how debilitating it is. It makes it really hard to put yourself out there and even harder to speak up when you do push yourself out of your comfort zone. And then social situations just bring on a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear, a lot of self-doubt, which then just makes it all so debilitating and it's just easier to stay home at that point. But like I mentioned in my last video when I was sharing the lessons that I learned from moving to a new city, when I moved to San Diego, I was essentially forced to overcome this social anxiety because I got to a point where I realized that I needed to put myself out there to make friends. And I was not gonna make friends in the comfort of my own home. And also, I was not gonna make friends just by like showing up to places. I needed to actually speak up, put myself out there, initiate conversations. And also, the more people that you meet, the more people you get connected with, the more opportunities come into your life. So that was another reason I did it as well, is because I knew that I was living in San Diego, I was an entrepreneur, a social media manager, and I knew that the more people I met, the more that I had potential to grow my business. So something that really helped me was to have reminders about social situations and the reality of them. So I'm gonna share with you these mindset shifts and these reminders that really helped me. So the first is that nobody cares. Nobody is thinking about you as much as you are thinking about you. Sometimes I feel like we can be so worried about other people judging us or perceiving us, but everybody else is also thinking that too. They're also in their own head. They're thinking about their to-do list. They're thinking about whatever it is that they're thinking about. And chances are they're not thinking about you. So kind of just reminding yourself that nobody cares as much as you think they do kind of helps to like remove some of the pressure. Like it's okay if I'm not perfect, it's okay if I mess up because nobody else is gonna be thinking about this like I am. And another one too is when have you honestly ever laid in bed replaying something that somebody said whether they messed up on something they stuttered or they just said something that maybe they it didn't get the kind of reaction they were hoping chances are you forgot about it maybe in that moment you laughed with them but you're not thinking about it a week later a month later a couple years later like so why hold on to those moments and replay moments where you messed up if nobody else is. This mindset shift was a huge game changer for me that awkward moments are normal. Everybody has awkward moments, but you don't need to identify with your awkward moments. So I went through a period of my time where I genuinely thought I was like the most awkward person ever. And I would constantly tell myself, I'm so awkward, I'm so awkward. Anytime anything would happen, like again, if I messed up on something, if I stuttered, or if I said something in a weird way, or if I didn't get the reaction that I was hoping for, literally my mind would say, I'm so awkward, I'm so awkward. And I kind of shifted that to instead, okay, that was awkward. Yeah, that was awkward, but that doesn't make me an awkward person. That was just an awkward moment. Everybody has awkward moments. Everybody messes up. Everybody stutters. Everybody has moments where they wish they would have said something a little bit better or a little bit differently, or maybe not said something. 
But those moments don't need to define you. Just because you have awkward moments doesn't make you an awkward person. So just letting those moments just be moments and not taking them on as identity traits really is a game changer. Something else that I struggled with is being a people pleaser and essentially wanting to be validated by people in the things that I was saying. So if somebody doesn't really react to something that I say or they don't respond, then that kind of would trigger like anxious thoughts. But something that I would remind myself is that everybody is different. Everybody processes things so differently and also people react to things so differently and you don't need to take it personally. Everybody has completely different personalities. There are some people that are very validating. They're very active listeners. Like they will like pay attention to you and nod their head and really be like active in the conversation. And that makes me feel validated. Like in social situations, that makes me feel like really good about myself. But then on the other end, there are people who aren't like that and who might be a little bit more reserved and they don't really show facial expressions. They don't really validate what you're saying. And like I said, those kind of people would kind of trigger those anxious thoughts. Like, what are they thinking? Do they even like me? Like, are they accepting what I'm saying? Like, my mind would kind of go into that. And we just have to remind ourselves that everybody is different. Everybody processes things differently. Just because somebody isn't reacting or isn't like actively engaging and listening to what you say doesn't mean that they don't like you. It doesn't mean anything about you. You just can't take things so personally because also you don't know what that person has going on. Maybe they're just having a really bad day and they're not as energetic socially and they're having difficulty like really engaging in that way. There could be any reason for it, but just not taking things so personally is a game changer. And I don't want to make it seem like it's bad to be shy and quiet and introverted and like more reserved because that's naturally how I am and I don't mind it. Like I love that about myself. I love that I can be a little bit more reserved and a little bit more to myself and I'm comfortable in that way. This The whole point of this video is just to help you feel more confident in social situations to be yourself so that if you do want to put yourself out there, if you do want to make connections with people and attract opportunities into your life that you are able to and that you are not overcome by social anxiety. So something to remind yourself is that it is okay to sit in silence. You don't always have to fill that silence. Just because you're working on overcoming your social anxiety doesn't mean that you need to go to, to the opposite end of the extreme and be like this outgoing bubbly person that's constantly filling the silence. It is okay to just sit in that silence. And if you don't have anything to say, that is okay. That was something that I had to accept about myself is that there are times where I just don't have anything to say and I really can't think of anything. Maybe I just don't have the energy to really engage in a conversation and I just sit in silence and that's okay. Just being okay with that silence and not always feeling the need to fill that silence, especially, I think this is huge, but especially if somebody says something that makes you feel uncomfortable or they just say something that's like out of pocket and you're like, why am I gonna respond to that? Like, I actually don't wanna respond to that. I don't wanna respond to that and make that person feel comfortable. I would rather they sit in the uncomfortable silence that they created. And that's kind of how I view that. <laughs> and then the last mindset shift to make is to start to change the way that you view yourself. So if you've always known yourself to be like this socially anxious, shy, quiet person, it's very difficult to see yourself as anything other than that if you keep on identifying with those traits. So stop calling yourself awkward, shy, quiet, all of these things if you no longer want to identify with them. And something that'll really help you with no longer identifying with those traits is creating an alter ego. So when I was working on overcoming my social anxiety and just being a lot more outgoing and making friends and putting myself out there, something that I did is I created an alter ego for myself. I created almost like this version of myself that's like outgoing, more confident, can talk to anybody. And I would almost like turn that version of me on before going to social situations. And it does really help to turn this version of yourself on if you're going to things alone. Because when you're at an event alone where you literally know nobody, nobody knows you as like a shy, quiet person because nobody knows you. 
So guess what? You can sh show up and be whoever you want to be. So I noticed that for myself, it was actually a lot easier for me to go to things alone and I could tap into that like confident, outgoing version of myself than if I were to go to events with friends. Because I noticed that when I would go to events with friends, I would kind of like, first of all, I would kind of lean on them for comfort and I would literally just talk to them. But also, if I was around friends who saw me as that more introverted, quiet person, then I would feel the need to stay in that identity. Whereas going to events alone, nobody knows you. So you can be whoever you want to be. You can be a confident, outgoing person and people are just going to think like that's who you are as a person. So it's kind of like how Beyonce created an alter ego for herself. So if you're unfamiliar with this, Beyonce basically created an alter ego version of herself called Sasha Fierce as a way to step into a version of herself who's just more bold and confident. And she would essentially tap into this version of herself before performing. In interviews, Beyonce explained that creating this alter ego allowed her to tap into a version of herself who's just a lot more fearless, a lot more confident, a lot more bold because at the time she was a little bit more shy and reserved. But over time of continuing to tap into this alter ego version of herself, she didn't feel the need to continue with this Sasha Fierce alter ego because she had become her. And that's exactly what happened to me. I no longer felt like I needed to like turn on this alter ego version of myself because that's just who I am now. I'm just more of like a confident outgoing person now. So alter egos aren't about pretending to be somebody else. It's about tapping into a version of you deep within you that is that more confident version of you, which allows you to express that more freely. Even Marilyn Monroe would talk about this too, about how she would kind of turn on her confidence. You definitely just need to try it. I've done it before where right before a meeting or right before doing something that was out of my comfort zone, I kind of just like close my eyes and breathe and just think about like this confident version of myself. And like literally I just say to myself, when I open my eyes, I am this version of me. And I open my eyes and I just, I just embody that. And it helps when you're doing that to also like stand tall, put your shoulders back because that just helps you feel a lot more confident in general too. To be more confident in social situations, you slowly need to push yourself out of your comfort zone. So when you have social anxiety, your mind tries to convince you that it's better to stay home, it's better not to talk to that person, it's better not to put yourself out there. But if this is something that you really want to overcome, you need to push past those thoughts and you need to slowly push yourself past your comfort zone. I'm not saying that from one day to the next, you need to become this brand new person that's all of a sudden super confident, super outgoing, can literally talk to anybody on the street, but you can take baby steps to get there. So for me, I started with events that I knew I wouldn't have to talk to people. So workout classes, meditation events, things where I knew like it would be, yes, it's a group setting, but like you're focused on your own thing, you know? In a workout class, you're not talking to the person next to you. You're focused on what you're doing. But I started with that to kind of just get myself comfortable with being in group settings and almost like regulate my nervous system while being around other people and being in social situations. And then once I felt comfortable with that, I'm like, okay, let me sign up for like an entrepreneur event, something that I knew I would have to talk to other people, but it's a little bit more structured that way. So I went to an entrepreneur circle in San Diego and it was really structured. Like we had journal prompts, but we also had like discussions too. And that kind of helped me slowly push myself out of my comfort zone because it was structured, but it also still had that like social element. It did allow me to kind of push myself a little bit. And then I would try networking events. And I even got to a point where I would host my own events too and like meet people that way. So I just slowly pushed myself out of my comfort zone and I noticed that with each event that I went to, with each person I met, my confidence was building and growing. And the more confidence you can build in yourself when you're in social situations, the more you're gonna be able to actually continue to put yourself out there and start to view social situations as a more positive thing. And that's why it's really great to look for events that you would resonate with, where you know that you're gonna find like-minded people because then it just makes it more fun and again, like you want to create positive experiences with social situations. The reason that we even have social anxiety in the first place is typically due to some type of negative experiences that you may have had in social situations that have caused you to kind of 
think of them as just like really negative things that like cause a lot of anxiety. So the more positive experiences you can have with social situations, the more you can kind of rewire that to start to see social things as more positive. And a great way to do that, like I said, is to go to events where you know you're going to meet like-minded people, you're going to do fun things that you resonate with. You know, for example, if you like pickleball, going to pickleball classes to meet other people who also play pickleball. If you're into meditation, going to meditation events, women's circles. But something I do want to say is that signing up for events is easy, but actually going to the events will probably bring up anxiety within you. Like it's not easy, especially if it's your first time ever going to an event. Chances are you're gonna have some anxious feelings about it leading up to the event. And again, your mind is probably gonna convince you, stay home, don't even bother, you're fine. You have all the friends you need. Your mind is gonna say some crazy things <laughs> to try to get you to stay but you need to push past those thoughts. I've been working on healing this for the past like two years and it still comes up for me. Just the other day, I went to an event here in South Florida. And when I tell you, my mind was really trying to convince me to stay home and continue watching my show. Even after I got ready, I got dressed, I did my makeup, I was still like, I could just lay in bed and watch Hulu. Like that's, that would just be so much more fun. And it's so much easier. Especially because now I'm in my hometown, so I noticed that it was a lot easier for me to go to events in a town where I knew nobody when I was in San Diego, but going to events in your hometown, I, at least for me, it did kind of bring up some anxiety of like, I was born and raised here, like I know the kind of people that are here and I know that I don't resonate with them, but like that's limited thinking because that's not the truth. Because when I went to this event, first of all, I didn't know anybody there and they were very like, in, like they were incredible women and I'm actually so glad that I went I ended up pushing past those thoughts and I showed up to that event and I literally like it was probably one of my favorite events ever it was just a dinner sitting around with like 12 different women and it was just everybody there was so welcoming so nice like and I think that's what I love so much about those types of events is that other people are there who are literally doing the same thing as you like they are showing up and putting themselves out there most of them showing up alone putting themselves out there to meet new people and to build new connections with people. And also something else too is that it's way easier if you pay for events because then that'll kind of incentivize you to go. Like I noticed that if I sign up for a bunch of free events, then my mind will convince me like, oh, I didn't even pay for it. Like I don't have to go, it's fine. But if I know that I paid for it, then I'm not gonna not go. <laughs> like with this event that I was just talking about, I spent like $30 on the ticket and even though my mind was convincing me like just stay home just stay home i was like no like i literally spent 30 dollars. like i'm gonna go <laughs> so it definitely helps to have some paid events on your calendar as well because then it, it forces you like you're not going to waste money at least i'm not going to <laughs> okay so let's say you start to put yourself out there you start to push yourself past your comfort zone you're going to these events but your anxiety is still overwhelming and it's coming up a lot. I wanted to share some techniques that can help you when you're in social situations to manage your anxiety. So the first thing to know is that anxiety comes from the unknown. It comes from uncertainty, from not knowing how people are going to react, from not knowing what to expect. And most of the time when you show up to events or you put yourself out there, there's no way to predict how it's going to go. There's no way to predict exactly what you're going to be doing and how people are going to respond to you and when you have anxiety especially social anxiety that uncertainty and that unknown can kind of trigger you to just think negatively and project negative thoughts about the social situation so here are some techniques that can help you the first thing is eft tapping i do have a video on my channel that just goes into depth on eft tapping so i will link that in the description box and i will put that up here so you can check that one out but eft tapping is really great for reducing anxiety. It stands for emotional freedom technique. And you're essentially tapping on different meridian points in your body to release emotion that's stored within your body. So when I was first starting to put myself out there and I noticed like anxious feelings coming up while I was already at the social situations, I would literally go into the bathroom and just do some tapping, literally just do some tapping. And that would help to reduce my anxiety even under the table, I would do the karate chop, just like that. And this is something that nobody can see. If you have your hands underneath the table, just tapping, just tapping, and that reduces some anxiety. 
EFT tapping is a really great way to like self-soothe and it also uses positive self-talk as well. So like I said, I'll link that video so that you can learn about EFT tapping in way more depth so you can know how to use it when you're in these social situations. And I mentioned it briefly, but positive self-talk is really gonna help you to manage this, this anxiety. If you're anything like me, whenever you're feeling anxious, like your thoughts are not nice at all. They are like sporadic, they're just going in a spiral and they're negative and they just don't make you feel good. This is when positive self-talk rampages can be really helpful. So what I would do is on my way to like any event, like while I was in the car driving, I would just speak out loud all of these like positive affirmations. Like I am confident, I am outgoing, I know how to handle any situation that comes my way. And just all of these different reminders to kind of just anchor in that confidence and I would even listen to like bad bitch music too to like really just get myself in the zone and just really feel that confidence before I even enter the social situations. Or if I was having like anxious thoughts in the middle of a social situation, again, just going to the bathroom, repeating some affirmations to yourself, just having like a little positive self-talk rampage in the bathroom just to kind of hype yourself up again. Another practical technique that you can use is to practice some conversation starters. So again, since anxiety thrives in uncertainty, preparing some type of conversation starters will really help you just know what to say to people so that if you have those moments where you're kind of like, ooh, like I don't know what to say and then anxiety and thoughts just start racing, you have a couple of just conversation starters that you can prepare. So some good ones are, if you're at an event, what brought you here tonight? Or are you from the area? How long have you been here for? What do you do? Or even complimenting somebody on something and asking them where they got it. All of these conversation starters and like preparing these conversation starters are really gonna help you so that in social situations, you know what to say. Another one is to be curious. So oftentimes the reason that we have the anxiety is because we're so focused on ourselves. We're so focused on how other people are thinking of us and perceiving us. But what if you can take that attention and that energy off of you and put it onto other people instead? That makes it so much better. And the way you can do this is by active listening, being very engaged in somebody's conversation asking them questions, like really getting to know them, putting your energy onto them instead of constantly thinking about yourself. And this is great too, because people love talking about themselves. People love it when you ask questions and when you're engaged and when you're active listening to them. And then the last technique is to be mindful of your body language. So like I said, stand tall with your shoulders back, make eye contact, and don't constantly be looking at your phone or your feet, eyes up, Imagine you're just the most confident woman in the room. If there's somebody that you kind of admire and you see them and you're like, oh, this person is very confident, like they just hold themselves really well, like kind of just tap into that energy and think about them when you're in social situations and tap into the qualities of them that you admire and embody those. The more you do that, the more you'll start to feel like you are that confident person, you are that outgoing person. You are the type of person that can talk to anybody. And you love connecting with people. You love having conversations with people. It's so easy. It comes naturally to you. This is what your language should be like with yourself so that you can build that confidence in yourself. Being confident in social situations takes time and consistency. The more you put yourself out there, the more you start to shift the way you view yourself. I no longer see myself as a quiet, shy, awkward girl. I see myself as being very confident and very outgoing and able to talk to anybody. I know that I can confidently walk into any social situation and be myself. That doesn't necessarily mean that I am the loudest person in the room and I'm super outgoing and I talk to everybody, but I am no longer that socially anxious person that talks to nobody. So I really hope that all of these tips helped you and just know that it takes time, it takes consistently putting yourself out there, and the more you do that, the more confident you will be in yourself. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the little notification bell so you don't miss my next video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.